Hello farmers, welcome back to No Man's Land. In between episodes, I worked on the BGA and finally got it taken care of, mostly. I'm uh, probably gonna decorate just a little bit more around here, but now we kinda got it squared off. I do believe I got enough room in front of the uh, the processing plant for the BGA to back on in there with a the trailer. Yeah, we still got the sugar beets, and I did put down the metal fence, and of course I put down some trees on the inside because you know me, I like putting down uh, some trees there. I did leave myself some room for a fourth generator if needed. So uh, we can always put that down in the future. And of course, I got a little bit of a road, metal fence, some trees around there. And I didn't stop with the trees there. I went around the sugar plant. And of course, on up to uh, a little bit up nearby our grain mill. So yeah, just a little bit of decoration, not a whole lot. Uh, let's jump on back down to the ground here. So you can get a better idea what it looks like from the ground. Yes, it's the metal fence right there. Um, can I jump over that still? Well, this farmer is very athletic. I should be in the Olympics for jumping over that. Yeah, the sugar beet. Yeah, it's just gonna, let's just ignore that for now. But uh, I tried to find a gate that was wide enough for the path that I have here for the road coming in. And most gates in game are like half the width. So uh, I'll probably have a look later on for gates that are wider. I know there's some gates on the mod hub, but I didn't really see, I didn't look too hard on the description to see how wide it is, but uh, that's going to be what, like 12 meter wide? I need like a 12 meter wide gate to get on through here. If so, then uh, we'll decorate it a little bit differently in the future. I may even put some lights in here, even though I don't work at night. You know, someday we might, who knows, who knows. But anyways, uh, let's go. We're up to $786,000 in the bank account because our BGA is still processing silage and also is now processing manure as well uh someone also did mention um a couple episodes ago though uh is when they made the comment on when i brought the slurry down i brought it down with the water well the tank that we use, mostly use for water and uh, also for milk and like why would i do that when i have the uh slurry tanker down here yeah i, I kind of forgot that I was sitting down here um, i leave that parked here for the digestate but yeah, I should be uh, bringing that actually into the cow barn to get the slurry out. That will probably actually fit under. Maybe that might fit under the cow barn. Um, I may try that out later on. But like I said last episode also, we got a lot of money and I want to spend it. And the first thing we're going to do is, I'm not going to call it an upgrade, um, but <laughs> we're going to do this anyways. Uh, we're going to go to harvesters. Yep, harvesters. Scrolling on down the class Lexian. Uh, for the main thing. We're, we're going to be harvesting today, so I need a combine with a longer pipes. Yes, size does matter uh, because we have a 60-foot header, and the ideal combine, unfortunately, the pipe isn't long enough to get, extend out past the header. So we're going to go ahead and get ourselves the Class Lexian. Now, as for the Ideal 9T, I'm going to keep that for now. Uh, let's see, wheels, standard, or wide? Um, I'm going to go wide tires, and for plates... Yeah, we're just going to go ahead and do no plates. Thank you. Uh, let's do that. So this is going to cost me $491,500. He bought it. It's done. Bring us down to, well, about $300,000. Don't worry. I know we still got plenty of money to buy ourselves the uh, Great Harvester when needed. Uh, let's jump into here. Ah, uh, brand new class Lexian. If it comes down to it, then I can always sell the 9T. But there's a few things I want to try out with the Lexian. First of all, the pipe should be long enough, like I said, to get around the header. Because we do need to harvest our canola today. And also the oats will be ready. Uh, we got a lot to do in the month of July. Uh, the oats are ready. Like I said, the canola is ready. The grass field is ready. Uh, but everything else is pretty much taken care of. But of course, once we start harvesting some fields, and then it's time to get ready to turn them back over and get ready for planting for next year. And... Yeah, I really haven't thought about it too much, what we're going to plant, because I want to see what the harvest is going to be like. Uh, we planted canola for the pig food, so that's exactly where it's going. All that's going to go right to the pig food mixer. The oats, everything there is going to the cereal factory. And, of course, the corn is going to be split between the pig food production and also into the cereal factory as well. So I got to see how those harvests go. Uh, but I am thinking, like I said, I th where the corn is currently down where the sugar beet field is and down there, I'm thinking that is where we're going to start planting our canola slash sunflowers and put the beehives down there. And then 
all the fields up around the main farm. That is where we're gonna do like our cereal crop because we do straw, so all the equipment's kind of around there. And then the ones on the hill, uh, yeah, that's that's to be determined I, at this point. I think it'll be for whatever other crop that we decide to plant. I'm also thinking about putting down a field over by the grass field and make that a corn field for silage because I think we might be converting that grass field to only for making hay in the future because I'm thinking about putting down another sheep pasture. Uh, I don't know if I want to put down the same exact one because I look kind of funny having two of the same sheep, pa sheep pastures side by side. Um, but if I'm going to not really do cotton harvesting anymore, then why not get more sheep to make more wool and and that way we can make more clothing and, and, and of course make more cash. Now, I've said this recently quite a bit here in the last like 10 episodes, but we are pretty much, I want to say, over the hump for, for money. I mean, the money's coming in rather fast and we have pretty much bought, I don't want, we haven't bought everything yet, but we have most of everything. So we're not spending as much as we used to. And now I got two really huge combines. Now, the first thing I want to try out before I get to harvesting is I want to try out this corn header. Uh, so I'm going to hook up to the corn header. The one we had problems with the ideal uh, going uphill. I want to see if the class Lexian has the same problem with it. Um, I can pretty much tell... Oh, you know why? I got flight mode on, so I can't enter a vehicle with flight mode on. Let's turn that off. It's kind of weird why that does that, but so be it. Uh, I'll pretty much know right away because when the ideal had the corn header on and I started it up, the RPM shot right up to almost like 2,000. So I'll be interested to see what the class Lexian does. If it doesn't do that, then it might go up the hill fine with it. Now the ideal actually has more horsepower, I do believe, than the class Lexian. Uh, let me double check on that before I say something that isn't true. So the Lexian actually has, oh, I should take that back, 780 horsepower. Okay, I take that back to 647. That is rather interesting. So I'm not really doing anything with the corn header. We're just going to go ahead and try it on out here. Unfold that and I'm going to have to unfold the combine as well. I just want to see what the RPMs get up to when I turn it on. Now I double checked on the mod for the corn header. It says it's compatible with the, the Massey Ferguson Ideal. All right, so right there, the RPMs are not maxed out just by going on even ground, which is kind of interesting. No, I don't want to fold that up. I need to fold that up. All right, so the other test I need to do is I need to go to where that hill is. And I'll double check on the hill to see what the RPMs do. Um, like I said, I will keep the 9T for now. Because I would like to have two harvesters going at a time. Because we're getting more and more fields. So I can always get another header for that. So I wouldn't get the 60 foot header for regular crop. I don't want to say regular crop. But uh, the standard header if you will. So maybe get like a 45 foot draper. Which will work rather good. I can always get the nine foot uh, corn sunflower header for that, and then we'll have no problem with the pipe. Let me unfold this again now that I'm over the bridge. So this is just a test I want to see. Once we start turning on the header and we start going uphill, do I drop down like one mile an hour is the question. Because this corn header gets, uh, has a pretty good star rating on the mod hub like four and three quarters out of five stars so I just want to make sure we're doing it justice so it could be just a problem with the Massey Ferguson ideal but it says it's compatible with it on the mod and you can see the class Lexian does not appear to have a problem with this corn header going uphill at all now we're not actually putting a crop through it I don't know if that makes a big difference or not in 22 but looks like uh, we're keeping the corn header and I'll go ahead and use the class Lexian for this all right that was it that was a test I wanted to do but really what we got the Lexian for was the longer pipe for the 60 foot header so I'm gonna bring the corn header back 
put definitely put that in the garage. We're keeping that. So the 9T, if I do use that this year, I'll have to swap out, or not swap out, but buy a header for it. I wonder actually how much, in case I need to, if I go to harvest uh, harvesters again, that is only worth $85,665. I don't want to say only. Um, it's kind of funny how when you start a game on Farming Simulator on a new map, and you're starting out, well, like I always play in hard economy and try to uh, try to give myself zero money. 85000 be like, wow, that's a lot of cash. Now, with the money coming in, it's like, eh, it's only 85000 I might as well just keep it at that point. Um, did I buy that? Yeah, I bought that used. So that's probably why it's as low as it is. Well, you're about to find out here very shortly why we got the class Lexian. If you remember the problems we had with the 9T, when we went to, when we went to unload into the trailer, yeah, the pipe uh, doesn't quite extend as far as a header does. Now we shouldn't have a problem. Can I get underneath that with that open? We can. Okay, back that on out. And I do believe the class Lexian holds about 1,000 more liters when harvesting. Not that big of an improvement, but it is an improvement nonetheless. Okay, we'll turn off the 9T. Right, let's go grab the 60-foot header. Oh, in case I haven't mentioned it, everything um, at the Big Red Barn, I have now got that on selling directly, so... Um, I think we've been there plenty of times and delivering that almost every day. So I think it was just easier by putting it on selling directly. So I don't have to go there every day or every other day to sell stuff. Now, from what I understand, you'll get the average sell price of that product. But the product is also, whoops, all sold at no man's land. So it's only one building that we're getting it from. So the price should be, uh, I didn't leave myself no room there. So we'll start in this field here. Uh, so the price should be pretty standard. I don't know if we take a small hit on delivery fees or anything like that, like it was in the very beginning. Let me just confirm here. Hopefully this pipe will definitely reach out past the header, which it should. There you go. So if you're using the 60-foot header that's on the Mod Hub, the Class Lexington is the combine of your choice. As far as I know, it's the only one with a long enough pipe. Now, of course, you can get modded combines with a longer pipe. That will help you out, but uh, this is what we're getting it for. And I just love how the chaff comes out the back of the combine. The cut-up stock. Kind of sprays it everywhere. Canola. They didn't change canola because I know it was a mod in 19 where we could get, take canola and uh, make straw with it. But I don't think you can do it still in 22. Straw is not available for current crop type. All right. Yeah. So that was a mod in 19 for corn, canola. Uh, we can make straw with that stuff. But for the most part, nah. So we still got plenty of cash to go ahead and buy the Grape Harvester. I'm not going to buy that yet until it comes time to. So I'm just going to try to keep that money there. Um, because you never know, it might come up for sale. Uh, another one, uh, another tip in between episodes that someone made when I was also trying to get the tanker into the cow barn. Uh, they said there was a certain tanker that would fit underneath there. And I was like, oh... And I kind of forgot about the combat until he started uh, getting ready to record this episode. And I was looking at tankers to go underneath there, and I actually had the mod downloaded, and it's a really nice tanker. So I actually may upgrade to that because it can hold a lot more. And I honestly don't remember where I got that mod tanker from. <laughs> but I'm going to say it's on the GE Mod Hub for sure. 
But yeah, there's so many configurations you can do to it. It holds a lot more than our current tanker has. Now we did buy that tanker on for sale, but it I don't want to say only holds 30,000 liters. I definitely would like to upgrade it. Um, I think I could actually upgrade that tanker that we have up to 50, but this one, if you want to go unrealistic on it, it will hold 200, I think it says 250,000 or 200,000 liters, quite a bit. But they said that tanker would fit underneath the, the cow structure that we have. Now I'm going to try to remember in the future that I actually have a digestate tanker. So instead of using our tanker for that we use, mostly use for water and milk, I'm not going to try to put slurry into that anymore. But don't worry, last time we washed it before we changed the product that was in it. Um, I don't know if I did or didn't, but that's what I'm going with. Wow, we're actually getting a lot of canola. I don't know what the yield potential was on this, but... Now, currently we are set on pig food, but this reminds you that we only had 20 pigs. So when we get to 300, I just want to make sure we're good to go. It's kind of like the cow TMR situation we kind of got going on. Up to 80 or 90 cattle, is it? And at first, that TMR mixer, it's like, yeah, that's, that's going to be nice. Do I, did I really need it, need it at the time? I was like, not really. Uh, but now the cows, with 90 cows, it seems like every day I'm going to have to top them off with TMR. So that TMR mixer is going to come in rather handy. Uh, this is going to be rather nice when I go to unload this. I don't have to uh, configure the trailer kind of behind the header and try to get underneath the pipe. It's just going to extend out far enough. I can drive up right beside it. And uh, when Frank is driving the combine, I don't have to finagle my way in there while he just keeps on driving. We can unload while he's harvesting. So that's why last episode, when I saw the money keep going up, I'm like, I think uh, we're just going to get the class flexi in. I was waiting for it to come up for sale. I think it came up for sale maybe once or twice. And just unfortunate enough, um, we didn't need it at the time. And I'm not going to complain about the 9T. There's nothing wrong with the 9T other than the pipe itself. And for some reason, uh, yeah, I'm not going to blame the combine for the corn header that we have. Um, I'm not really sure what's going on there. The mod says it's compatible with it. All right, let's turn this around here. I'm hoping we got plenty of oats. Because I do want to make a lot of cereal this year. Look at that. that. That's nice. That is... That is sweet. Alright, so the other thing I, we're going to need to do before we plant this year is the nitrogen level... Sorry, the pH level is getting just a little bit low. So I'll have to take care of that. And probably, while it's unloading here... Uh, we'll probably just get the Breedle Spreader. Oh, that's my garage. That's why it's not going to be there. Um, right here. Uh, there are a couple of them right here. Uh, let's see. So I'm probably going to get Stevie's mod of the Breedle only because here I don't have no color choices. And I do like to change the color on up a little bit so we can change it to any color we want. Like if I wanted to go with pink, with purple... And then if you want to go really crazy, just with green color rims um, to drive some people nuts, uh, <laughs> you can go ahead and do something like that. Uh, paint it any color we want. Uh, okay, so we're done unloading there, so that's perfect. So we're going to get these two canola fields harvested. Then once it's done with that, i got to grab the Mac Anthem truck. And then we got to grab our own trailer and we got to start transporting around some material I got to bring the butter to the donut shop and also to bread pit and then I'm not sure how much milk we got but we'll grab our tanker and I may sell that tanker and buy the new one because the new one is rather cheap it's only like uh, 30 grand so we might actually be able to make a uh, no we're not gonna make a profit on that tanker that we have 
Uh, but that we bought that tanker used is pretty well chipped up. So we may go ahead and swap that out because I do like the looks of it rather nicely and I would like to show it to you guys. A lot of you already probably, probably know about it. But I think it'll be nice to have around here on the farm. But let's get to harvesting this canola. Uh, I'll be interested to see what kind of a harvest we get. And hopefully with the 60 foot header and now the class Lexian being able to unload a little bit easier into the trailer. This job won't take us too long. And then uh, maybe we'll get the Deutzvar or the McCormick into this field and start plowing it as well. I'm thinking what we have in the combine right here may fill the trailer. If it's not already full. Yeah, but it's really nice just to pull up to the trailer and not have to slide it, the pipe over the trailer. You know, I don't want to say correctly, but very precisely. That's the word I'm looking for. Now let's go ahead and load it on in there. Actually, let me bring the HUD back up so I can see the status of the combine. Yep, trailer is full. So we'll bring that all over. Let me just double check here, make sure, because uh, I mean, it's been almost a year in game. Oh, where's my production buildings here? Uh, way down to here somewhere. Uh, there it is. So we're doing the corn. Um, we already got, we, uh, sorry, we already got barley in there. Uh, we got to bring the canola over. And of course we do have sugar beet in there as well. Uh, is that what I'm doing? Yeah, that's what, that's what we're doing. So I can bring some more sugar beet up there. Maybe that's what I'll do with the sugar beet that's on the ground down to BGA. I'll pick that up, put that into a trailer, and bring it on up. Um, that way we get some pig food made that we need. Well, that's one trailer load full. And, you know, I'd say we're maybe 60, 70% done with this field here. I'm going to keep on harvesting until I get the combine full, and then we'll bring the trailer over, dump that into the pig food production, and uh, before we go any further, I think we'll grab the tanker while we're over there, and we'll go, you know, we'll go uh, sell the tanker that we currently have and buy ourselves a brand new one, and that'll be like an upgrade for us. Well, so far we got 59,000 liters a full trailer of canola coming on over to the pig food production. I'm guessing I, might, I may get like another 40. The combine is already full, which is 18,000 liters. And I still got more of that field to go. And then I got the other field, which is on the smallish side. So yeah, to get another, you know, like 20,000 from harvesting, I think can be doable. So we're looking at pretty close to 100,000 liters of canola coming on over here 
which definitely should help us on out with the pig food production in about a year or so. The way the pigs are going to start reproducing. Uh, let me go ahead and change this. I know that's going to be on tip back. I want this a slotting floor. And that'll be good. I do have potatoes coming into the pig food production because our greenhouse is set to distribute. And of course the pig food production does take potatoes. Maybe in the future I could swap up uh, what recipe we do for pig food. I could always take the potatoes back out and then bring that over to the big red barn to make premium potatoes. But right now they got plenty of potatoes to start with. All right, even though I got more harvesting to do, I'm going to do that uh, in between episodes. Uh, the TMR mixer is going. I probably need to bring some silage over to there. I'm going to go ahead and park this up right there. Let's go grab this tanker. And we're going to go sell this and buy ourselves a brand new one. Because this one's been contaminated. Someone put some slurry in there and it should be just water. And milk only. I'm actually thinking about um, possibly getting myself two tankers because we do got the grass field to cut and we know what's going to happen when I cut the grass field. We're going to compact it, ferment it, get silage, bring that on down to the BGA and we saw what the BGA can do. Uh, speaking of, I just realized we, we reached top of the hour and back over $300,000 in the bank account. As for, I talked about putting down a shed for trailers. I'm thinking I cut a shed right here and I'm not really using it to its full potential. I'm going to go ahead and probably park some of our trailers in there. And I really need to do this section over for decorating. I know I've been saying it, but it's long overdue. Uh, let's go in here. I do want to see, uh, customize. What is the capacity? So I, I, it can be 30,000, 40,000, 50,000. So yeah, I could upgrade this one as well, but you know what? You're going to see what we're going to be doing here in just a moment. Let's back on out of here. Uh, the other thing I was kind of interested in, um, if we look at the trailer, I think I did this in 19, but I don't think I've tried it in 22. You can see the paint is really pretty well worn out. I'm wondering, instead of re you know repainting it for 3,500, if I come into customize and I change the color, we'll just change it to green. It's not going to cost me anything. If I say change, oh, I already got it there. Okay. And I say customize. It's going to cost me nothing. Yes. No, it doesn't fix the paint. Uh, the same as it did in 19. I didn't think it would, but you, you know, you got to try it. I, I may have already tried it here, but I just didn't remember. Uh, we're going to go ahead and I'll repair for 214. See how much the value goes up to. Does it get up to 494 or better? All right, so it gets up to 516. So I actually made a little bit of money by repairing it. I'm not going to bother repainting it because eh, this ain't worth it to me right now to do that. Uh, make sure I'm selling the tank or not my Mac Anthem. All right. So we got the 14,516. So that's going to be about half the money for the new tanker that we're buying. So I'm going to drive on down to the store. We're going to get ourselves a tanker, customize it on up. And it'll be for water and milk only. And then I'm going to test it. I'm going to bring it back up here to herd that, the cow barn. I've been told it will drive under. If it does, then I'll probably end up buying myself in the near future another tanker. Because like I said, it's rather cheap. And then I can transport liquid slurry down here. And I, yeah, I know I just mentioned at the beginning of the episode that we have a slurry tanker down here. That only holds 30,000. Um, yeah, we can really upgrade this tanker to bring down a lot. And I'd just rather leave this uh, digestate sprayer down here. So, for the price of it, may as well just buy ourself, ourselves a second one. Alright, we'll turn off our truck. That way the exhaust doesn't come into the store. Uh, but we're going to come in here. We actually got to go to trailers. And this is probably why I missed it before. Uh, scroll all the way to the back end. Right here. This is what we're doing. Uh, this is on the, the Giants Mod Hub in-game. And it's made by 82 Studios, by the way. So configuration, we got the unrealistic, which can, uh, as you can see, can hold, you know, 250,000 liters or the standard 67,240. We're going to go with standard because I think quarter of a million 
liters. I don't know how the Mac Anthem is going to be able to haul that around. Uh, this is double the capacity of what we could have. Now, the wheel brands. We'll start off with the wheel brands. Tons of different kind of wheel brands that we can have. Uh, you got yourself your Continentals, Phoenix, uh, Trilex, Vintage, Vertiston, uh, Nokian, and back to Continental. Uh, I'm trying to remember which ones I was looking at. So there are different kind of wheel setups you can have per tire as well. Um, where was the one? I can't show you them all. Is it the Vintage? No. Was it the Vertiston? Yeah, I think the Vertison. So you can see we can have ourselves uh, our agricultural tires on there. And there's different tread sizes that you can have. But also, you can do crawler tracks on it, which would be kind of neat. Um, but I kind of like the the agricultural number three kind of tire. Um, that's what we're going with. Uh, special edition standard. Uh, what does that do? Oh, so yeah, we could, we're going to have... Um, you can have standard where it's just, you know, the matching of the chrome, or you can do black. I do like the looks of copper, but I'm going to save the copper one for the slurry tanker if this works. Uh, then you got your silver, and then you got your sad, and then standard. I think we're going to go with black. Uh, then illumination, you can have lights around the rear. You can have your soft working lights along that. Uh, but why not go for all for 400, even though we don't really drive at night? Uh, warning signs, flammable liquid, uh, food grade, I think food grade, uh, fresh milk probably, milk and water, that's what we'll go with, that's what we're looking for. A liftable axle, so right now we got two axles, we're going to go with a third, that costs zero, which is nice. Uh, where are we here? Vinyls. Um, there's only one kind of vinyl here that I can see, where was I, vinyls. Yeah, I'm not really sure what that does, other than gives us some kind of a weird texture on the tank. Uh, is that what the design color was for? Hang on, design color. Nope. Uh, so I don't know what that does. Uh, I want to leave the vinyls off. Fenders. Yeah, we'll put fenders on there because we drive a lot in the dirt, so I don't want the dirt and uh, stones kicking up and denting our, our beautiful tanker. Uh, attachers, I don't really need an attacher on the back of this. So we're going to leave that off. Uh, main color. So it's going to be water and milk. Uh, wait, that's just a little bit too blue. If I go pearl white. Might need some sunglasses. There, that's a little bit uh, doable right there. I think we're just going to leave everything right there for colors. Uh, rim color, we're just going to leave it as is. Uh, but this is going to be for our milk and water only. And back only, no plate. Copy that. So we're looking at 31570 So it's going to be about the same price if I want the slurry tanker in the near future. Let's go ahead and buy that. And there she is, right there. A brand new tanker. Nice and clean. On the outside and inside. Now, I was told this tanker will fit in our cow barn to the slurries uh, tanker area. That's true. Next time I need slurry out of there, we'll go ahead and get ourselves the same tanker, but we'll put copper on top and probably different uh, tank color as well. So we do have a liftable axle. If I bring up the HUD, I'm looking for, so there's no way for me to lower, maybe it lowers the axle once we put something in there, which we're going to. Uh, we're gonna we are gonna fill this up with milk and bring it on down to the donut shop and whatever the donut shop doesn't take after that, we'll bring it on over to Bread Pit. Well, let's get back to our cow barn and see if this fits under that wonderful little post that we have to get through. It does look shorter, so we will see. All right, test number one. Let's open up the gate here. Uh, 
and that is okay it's a lot shorter <laughs> than the other tanker was I didn't think it was that short but apparently it is sorry ladies it's a good thing that the cows are are, are something you can just like almost say drive through but we are uh, the tanker does seem to be a little bit longer than the other one but that's the only way I'm getting out of there is by looping around that way now of course I could buy myself a smaller tanker and a tractor and just go in there and keep going in and out in and out but um, we got I got so much to do here in no man's land I think uh, time saving is what I'm looking for currently now let's back on up here now I may have to actually open up covers on this one uh, pump door on so I gotta turn the pump door on and then can I load up okay how about now if I back up where's the trigger for this here you need to fill the tool Okay, wait, maybe I gotta turn that off. Okay, so why are we not filling up with milk? Now, the trigger for the other tanker was like in the back. Alright, I'm sure I'm missing something here. Just gotta find out where the trigger is for it. Alright, so if I back up like that, now I get the one that says open up door. And now I can fill. Uh, by the way, the third axle, if you happen to get it, uh, at least on the PC anyways, uh, you got to use your mouse button. Left mouse button, you can lower the axle. On down, and that should be lowered. And of course, now you can see it being raised. So we actually got 16,000 liters of milk. There we go, now the third axle is on the ground, so we'll keep it like that, maybe. Alright, let's bring some of this milk on down to the donut shop. And then the rest will go on over to Bread Pit. So in the future, the Big Red Barn, i got to sell those pallets myself, because they're spawned. But everything from the Big Red Barn will be sold by the hour. Because everything that's made there is sold at the No Man Land shop anyway. So the average price is going to be whatever the price it was before. I just don't know if I take a 5% hit or a 10% hit on the price for delivery. I think uh, when uh, it, Farming Simulator 22 came out, you know, it looked like there was a delivery fee for it. But then again, if we were trying to do an average price, we're trying to figure out who it was being sold to. But then um, Giants did say it's an average price from all the stores. So it kind of made sense that way. But I don't know if we pay a delivery fee still for selling directly. I'm not sure. Alright, so let's see how much milk the donut shop takes. And when I go to unload this, so I have to open up the covers again to unload it, or do I have to turn that pump on? The tanker seems longer, but actually I don't, I think it's the same tanker in a way, for the most part. Nah, it does seem longer. Alright, so now I just gotta get... I think here is a trigger and let me bring up the HUD so I don't have to open up the covers to unload but I'll open them up just to let the air in oh so that's all the milk it's going to take I was like why is that still unloading because it's got to be full 7,000 liters. Yeah, I'm used to uh, Epides factories, production buildings that take five times as much. But that's a good thing. Well, now we got some more milk to bring up to Bread Pit. We can start making some cakes after we bring this tanker back. 
and grabbed the, the chrome trailer and got to bring the butter on down. So the cows are starting to, I don't want to say keep up with our production buildings, but they're doing well enough, like, you know, they're not going to be shut down for too long before I can start producing more cakes and donuts. And eventually, well, if we have enough milk, it'll be brought over to the Big Red Barn and we'll start making some strawberry ice cream. All right, let's open up the covers, let the air in so I can, oh, not in the trigger. All right, can I not have the covers open to unload? Was I not in the trigger? There's the trigger. And that should take all the milk, I'm sure. There we go. So all the milk is delivered. All right, time to bring the tanker back. I'm gonna try to park this into the shed. So we can clean, clean, you know, clear out our silo bunker. Because we got to cut grass today. Uh, not in this episode, but uh, in this in-game day. So we're going to need the other bunker. So I got to clear that out. Yeah, definitely got to get back over here to this shed area and uh, spice it up and make it look more like a real shed and parking area. I don't think I need to get that close to the framework of the shed. But looks like I can park maybe six trailers up the long length in here. Actually, just five. The reason why I'm saying just five is because when I bring... I'm going to push our forge wagon down a little bit. I want to make sure we're... Oh, we're way under. Okay, never mind. Um, when I bring our header over here, the 60-foot header... Uh, yeah, that's going to be like a drive through thing. That's got an articulated front axle, so yeah, I'm not going to be able to back that up and in there. Got to make a little bit of a road down through here. All right, the silage that we do have left, I need to put that into the silo, uh, sorry, the TMR uh, mixer. Uh, we'll leave that there for now. I'm not going to bring anything on down to the VGA. All right, the first thing I'm going to do, though, I'm going to go over to the Big Red Barn. I'm going to grab the pallets that are there. I'm going to bring that on down, sell those, and then I'll meet you down at the Dairy Godmother. We'll pick up the butter, and we'll get that delivered to those two shops and activate those, get those up and working again. And then I can get back to harvesting our canola fields. All right, I really don't remember how much milk we brought down here to be processed in the butter, but it looks like I got a decent amount out there. Is that about 15,000 liters-ish? Okay, so 13,000 liters, not too bad. I'm pretty sure the donut shop's not going to take all of it. But donut shop is a priority because I actually make more from the donuts than I do from the cakes. It just seems a little bit weird. It seems like a lot more work goes into the cakes with the recipe than the donuts. But the chocolate donuts I can kind of understand because look how much milk you need to make a chocolate donut. You gotta, you know, you need milk to make chocolate. You need milk to make butter. And you need milk in itself to help make the donut. That's a lot of milk. Well, overall, not too bad. We're sitting just shy of 300000 That's after buying a half million dollar combine um, and a $30,000 tanker. Still have more than enough to buy the grape harvester if needed right now, but we don't need that for a while. Is that all the donut shop can take? Uh, I do need to bring some sugar on down as well, but I can go ahead and activate these two right here. I'm not making just regular glazed donuts. I'm just making strawberry and chocolate. I want to make sure all of our flour, sugar, eggs, and whatnot go into that. 
Let's go ahead and activate that and activate that. So I do have to bring some eggs down, some sugar down. Uh, I got flour as well I can bring on down. And I don't have that stuff on distribute to factories because of the Big Red Barn. Even though the Big Red Barn is really nice because we can uh, take lettuce and tomatoes and, and other products and make some productions out of it. And also we'll take those products I don't want to bring in there. Like I said, I would like to see Giants in the factory mode where it shows, you know, we, just like we can on the selling products where we can either store it, distribute it, or sell it. I would like to see a bar there for the incoming materials to either activate or deactivate those. So that way you can have the products going where you want them to go. Maybe asking a bit much, but it would be nice. Uh, where is the rest of my butter here? Alright, where is it? Oh, it's in the front. Alright, got it. We got it. Alright, so Bread Pit is going to be one of the first factories we put down. So that is way up here somewhere. And, yep, we got plenty of stuff here. Well, plenty. Good enough. Let's go ahead and activate that. Yeah, we don't make bread anymore at Bread Pit. But, I mean, I guess we could. What is there? Is that just bread? Uh, not bread. <laughs> of course it's just bread. Uh, no, it's just flour. All right, we do have plenty of flour in there. But let's be honest, I'd rather save the flour right now for the kind of material there. Well, I'm going to go pick up some sugar. Um, not a whole lot, but I'm going to bring that on, on down to the donut shop. Top that off with some, you know, like the sugar I'm going to pick up here. Because we got plenty of it. And then later on, I'll bring some eggs down. I'm going to try to get the canola harvest done before next episode. Next episode, uh, we'll be taking care of the oats. We should be doing that. Uh, we'll get to the grass field at some point. Um, I'm just not sure when yet. But hopefully, maybe a little bit next episode. Maybe we'll at least cut it. I'll take more than 6,000 liters of sugar. But yeah, we got plenty more stuff to do here. Uh, but we're making upgrades to the farm. Looks like uh, the class Lexian Combine is going to do very well for us. Very easier to unload with a 60 brake header and a longer pipe. And also good news that it works so much better on the corn sunflower header. So in theory, I could actually leave the sunflowers back on the hill where they were because the header now works over there. So I got to figure out where I want to put stuff. I won't have to move the beehives. I can just make more fields up there for canola if I need it or sunflowers. Whatever I like up there. Something to think about. But that's going to do it for today, guys. Hopefully you guys did enjoy the episode. I do appreciate you watching as always. I'll catch you again right here again in no man's land. But until then, have a good one.